tons of activities to do here at all times. I knew instantly that I wanted to be here, the trees and the ocean. We all help each other out wherever we can. And now we're able to grow all of our own fruits and vegetables. Having people in your corner who know about tiny living is really important. Hi, my name is Katie Wiley. Welcome to Tiny Tranquility. Let me show you around. Tiny Tranquility is a tiny home community that consists of just over 30 long-term sites and 11 nightly rentals. Tiny Tranquility is located in Waldport, Oregon, which is right on the central Oregon coast. Our town motto is where the forest meets the sea, and it truly is just that. We live in a very unique ecosystem where we are surrounded by lush forests directly across the street from the Pacific Ocean. Waldport is actually a very small town. We're located just south of Newport, Oregon, which is actually a lot more well-known here on the Oregon coast. We love our small town vibe. We ended up in Waldport by a mistake, really. Like neither one of us had heard of it and we just needed a place to stay and the KOA was open. So we came down here and we jumped in. And really, I think from there is really when we fell in love with it. I was in and out a little bit for work and Kristen got to stay behind and get to know the town a little bit while I was away. And uh, by the time I came home from my work trip, she had decided that we were gonna stay here now. And I think <laughs> that's about when we found Tiny Tranquility. But I think by then we knew that we were gonna stay in Waldport and we wanted to own. and and design our own place. And that's really, I think, where we went from there. One of the biggest benefits of where we chose to live was we are two blocks away from the beach, which we, if it's not raining, we'll go out every day after work and take her to the beach to play and look for agates. <laughs> In the beginning stages of Tiny Tranquility, I know there was a bit of pushback from the local community. Um, I think expecting just another run-of-the-mill trailer park, but now that it is an established tiny house village, uh, it is welcomed with open arms here in Waldport. People love it. Uh, people ask me all the time, oh, where do you live? And I'll say, oh, do you know Tiny Tranquility? You know that tiny house village in Waldport? And they're like, oh my gosh, we know. We know that place. We love that place. So. Yeah, people have gotten uh, really used to the idea of tiny living around here and they've really embraced it. We're over here by some of our long-term residents and living here long-term at Tiny Tranquility really provides such a sense of community for so many people from so many different walks of life. Some of the benefits of living in a tiny home community like Tiny Tranquility is that we have so many common spaces available for all of our residents and our nightly renters. Not only do we have these common spaces where people can go to stretch their legs a bit, but we also have a real sense of community here at Tiny Tranquility Park where everyone knows everyone and it's a very safe place to live. A lot of people that do live here have chosen to go tiny, so they're not tied down to a big mortgage, so they have the freedom to travel. And if they do travel, there's always somebody here to look out for their house or their pet while they're gone. A lot of our residents and tiny home community members know a lot about tiny living. So if there's ever a situation that arises that maybe needs some fixing, there's always somebody here to help. In addition to living amongst friends and neighbors, we also live in a really unique place in Oregon to where we are right next door to the woods and also directly across the street from the ocean. So there's tons of activities to do here at all times. Whether you like kayaking, agate hunting, surfing, or just beachcombing, there's something here for everybody. We even organize community events such as hiking trips, kayak trips, even art classes here at Tiny Tranquility. When thinking about going tiny, a lot of people have some questions on where to start, such as where can they live? Where can they park their tiny? So I always suggest ask your builder. A lot of times builders know better than anyone where you can park these tiny houses. The idea of a community seemed safe to me, and you know, it's like a little neighborhood here. I've never knew my neighbors most of the years of my life, you know, living in big cities. You just 
kind of don't know maybe the person across the street but uh, here I know every single person that lives here there has to be 40 houses maybe you just see everybody every day and I feel completely safe here I'm so happy here everybody here is really nice I call it a hamlet it's like a little hamlet here and we don't have our own governing body but you know we we all work things out together here so um, if there's any issues so living in this little community is wonderful and the owner has made it be wonderful for us people are very kind they're very willing to to help out i know that when we first arrived with our home in december um, people came over and they brought food actually for our first night even though we were staying here in one yes. of the other homes they came over and introduced themselves and they gave us space so it wasn't like they just flooded in um, you know they were all eager to see the home and what it looked like however more than anything they were eager to meet us and introduce themselves, welcome us to the community. So that feels really great to be in a community where you feel like you're part of the community and everyone is welcoming. It's truly a community where people help one another. We work together. Mm -hmm. um, if someone's going on a vacation, there's dog sitting and plant sitting and <laughs> it's all give and take here and it's mm -hmm. a lovely reciprocal relationship with the neighbors. Mm -hmm. It's very down to earth. So I suppose the difference between uh, living in a tiny house on a plot of land where you're secluded versus living in a community like this is just preference. Whether you want privacy or you want the safety of neighbors and people around you, I know that a lot of people here are retired and a lot of them are single. So they're looking for neighbors to not only uh, keep an eye out for them, but also for friends to do things with out in the community. We are now here in the row where most of our nightly rentals are located. We have 11 nightly rentals total, nine of which are tiny houses and the other two are classic trailers. We have such a wide variety of nightly rentals that they really are suited for anyone from large families with pets to an individual looking to live tiny and just wanting to give it a try. There are a lot of benefits to renting a tiny space for the weekend. Uh, one, it's just a really fun experience, but it's also great for those people who are wanting to live tiny without making the full commitment. They can experience tiny living for a short period of time and see if it works for them. We have so many unique community spaces, large community spaces, that I'll be showing you in just a bit. We even have our very own dog park. When booking a tiny house here at Tiny Tranquility, I think our guests are pleasantly surprised at the really incredible use of space in these tiny houses. They're all built by some of the best in the industry who really know how to make the best use of space. In comparison to booking your standard hotel, people have more space, more privacy, and more amenities here at Tiny Tranquility. You not only have a comfortable space to relax in, but you have a fully stocked cook's kitchen, your own private bathroom, and some of them even have fireplaces. If you're interested in booking any of our tiny houses, whether for a beach vacation or to try out tiny living, go to tinytranquility.com. Living here at Tiny Tranquility Park, it is uh, one of the top parks in the nation. I'm very pleased to um, see other parks and models um, being built as well. There's um, uh, quite a few of them uh, popping up now. Um, being here for three years now, it has gone from being an old nursery to being a community where three quarters of the people live um, long term and uh, a quarter of the people um, come here and stay in nightly rentals. I would advise people who are thinking about living in a tiny home to go on the Tiny Tranquility website because there are 10 tiny homes that Josh Palmer, the owner of Tiny Tranquility, that he has that he rents out. And you can get a feel for what it's like living in a tiny home. I think that's really important because I know there's been people here that have bought a tiny home and moved it into the park on their site. And the tiny home has been just too small for them. So they have ended up selling the tiny home and then having a larger home, either purchase it already made or have it built. So you really want to pay attention to how much space you need. I like also that we have a lot of visitors in the park because about 10 of the homes here are 
um, nightly Airbnb rentals. So we get to meet people from all over the world and the country. It's been really amazing to meet different travelers and to learn about their life experiences. We are now in our Redwood Commons, which is a great community space here at the park. One of the challenges of living tiny is you don't always have the space in your tiny home for major appliances, such as stoves, uh, cooktops, microwaves, blenders, and such. But here in the Redwood Commons, we offer all of that and more, not only for our long-term residents, but these are also available for our nightly guests that are staying in our tiny spaces as well. In addition to a fully stocked kitchen with everything you would need to create a gourmet meal, we have sofas, a fireplace, and even an ocean view with spectacular lighting. So it's a great place to come and hang out with friends, family, even just a cup of coffee or a glass of wine. Our Redwood Commons is also filled with large picture windows. So from every seat in here, you have an ocean view to the Pacific Ocean directly across the street, including our ocean viewing deck located just outside. We are now in the Doug Fur Lodge, which is actually the space that I personally spend most of my time in because this space has so much to offer just about anybody. Whether you enjoy curling up with a good book next to the fireplace, playing pool, ping pong, or just in search of a good board game or puzzle, we've got you covered. We even have our very own library with DVD section if you wanted to check out a movie and take it into our TV room that's equipped with large overstuffed leather sofas and a big screen TV. Not only is the Doug Fur Lodge a great place to come and relax and entertain yourself, but we also have a full laundry facility and shower facility that is available for our long-term residents and nightly renters. Because as you know, sometimes tiny houses aren't equipped with full washers and dryers, so we've got some here for you. One thing about Tiny Tranquility Park that people may not know is it used to be a very large nursery that unfortunately fell into foreclosure and was completely overgrown. However, the owner of Tiny Tranquility was able to repurpose these beautiful greenhouses that you see behind me. And now we're able to grow all of our own fruits and vegetables available to anybody here in the community as well as nightly guests. This greenhouse alone is 12,000 square feet of garden space, workshop area, because of another challenge of living tiny is you don't always have a garage. So here at Tiny Tranquility, we do have some workshop space available for any projects you may need to work on, as well as a mail area. And we even have our own glass blower here at the park. Located right next to our workshop, we also have storage units available for people who may have a little too much stuff to fit in their tiny, we even have people rent those out as their artist space. This specific community has a lot of amenities, really cool common area, pool table, ping pong. There is a full-size washer dryer um, that we are on a rotation to use for some of our bigger loads. It's just great to be around people who share the same lifestyle that you do with all the amenities we have at the park. We have a community garden. We also have several viewing rooms and several social rooms. Uh, there is a building where you can see all out across the ocean. So there are ways to be social and really enjoy the people that live here, but still have the privacy of your home. One of the things I love about living here is the community garden. I love to garden. I like to get my hands in the dirt. I don't know a lot about vegetable gardening, so I've been learning. So I love being a part of growing all of our foods here. It's been amazing to go over every night and pick 
fresh lettuce for my salad and chives and other wonderful things that are growing in the garden. So I really enjoy uh, being a part of the little garden crew and community. If you're looking to go tiny, I think one of the best things that you can do is tour a bunch of tiny houses. Look at as many tiny houses as possible. Um, I know just here alone, almost all of our tiny houses have different layouts. So there's certainly things that function better than others. Perhaps you want a larger living space or maybe you want a larger kitchen. It's up to you. It depends on what works best for your lifestyle. So I definitely think looking at as many tiny houses as possible is the best way to go. I think starting out in a tiny house community like this, even if your end goal is to live secluded, um, a lot of times, especially with tiny living, because it is fairly new, uh, places are not necessarily zoned for tiny houses. This could be a great stepping stone between just not living tiny at all and finally having your own plot of land. Sometimes finding a plot of land that is zoned for tiny living or RVs is tricky. So you can move your tiny house into a community such as this until you can secure your own property. living I think is really acceptable for anyone at any age. Uh, when we first started working here at Tiny Tranquility, I kind of thought it would be a younger demographic that they just wanted to live tiny so they had the freedom to travel, but that's not necessarily the case. There are a lot of people that are just wanting to retire and not have a huge mortgage. There's uh, people that just wanna live right across the street from the ocean. Um, and there's some people that just wanna live here because it's a really safe community. So I think tiny living is for anyone and everyone at any age. I certainly don't think there are any limitations on tiny living. I knew instantly that I wanted to be here, the trees and the ocean. I just knew I wanted to be here and I knew how hard it was to find something that was really nice and this is really nice here. We're very thankful that we found Tiny Tranquility. Not only were we first time tiny home dwellers, um, we're also first time home buyers. Having people in your corner who know about tiny living is really important. This is a tiny house community, a tiny house village with tiny house neighbors who are very well beloved and we all help each other out wherever we can. I live the ideal lifestyle now and I'm, I'm very very happy to live here at Tiny Tranquility. We decided we were done living in the city, we were done with the lifestyle, the pace. We wanted a change. It is a wonderful community and everybody looks out after each other. Being in Tiny Tranquility has been quite an amazing journey. Everyone is just very, very kind, great neighbors, and that is what drew us to this park because just the people, I don't know if it's because of tiny home living or what, but the people here are absolutely gems. Thank you so much for joining me at Tiny Tranquility today. If you are interested in tiny living or just renting one of our tiny houses for a beach vacation, go to tinytranquility.com.